All right, guys, this is your first sixth grade IA. This is subpart one. It's the writing section. You are going to do awesome. There are three things that you're getting graded on. Two of them you'll get graded on today, and those are your annotations and your genre-based thinking jobs. So make sure you do these for each passage before you write your essay. Go ahead and write your name before we get started. Read the passages and annotate and write a response to the writing prompt. Excerpt from The Conceited Python by Ruskin Bond. During his retirement in northern India, Grandfather could not resist buying unusual pets. Once he paid a snake charmer in the bazaar five rupees for a young, four-foot-long python. Then, to the delight of a curious group of boys and girls, he slung the python over his shoulder and walked home. The first to see them arrive was Toto the monkey, who was swinging from a branch of the jackfruit tree. One look at the python, and he fled into the house, squealing with fright. The noise brought Grandmother onto the veranda, where she, was ne where she nearly fainted at the sight of the python curled around Grandfather's throat. Grandmother was tolerant of most birds and animals, but she drew the line at reptiles. Even a sweet-tempered chameleon made her blood run cold. Grandfather should have known that there was little chance of being allowed to keep a python. It will strangle you to death, she cried. Get rid of it at once. Nonsense, said Grandfather. He's only a young fellow. He'll soon get used to us. He might indeed, said Grandmother, but I have no intention of getting used to him. And your cousin Mabel is coming to stay with us tomorrow. She'll leave the minute she knows there's a snake in the house. Perhaps we should show it to her first thing, said Grandfather. He did not look forward to the visits of Aunt Mabel. You'll do no such thing, said Grandmother. Well, I can't let it loose in the garden. It might find its way into the poultry house. And then where would we be? The word rupees that you saw in the passage means the basic unit of money in India. So it's like a dollar. Oh, how tiresome you are, grumbled Grandmother. Lock the thing in the bathroom. Go find the man you bought it from and tell him to come here and collect it. And so, in my awestruck presence, Grandfather took the python into the bathroom and placed it in the tub. After closing the door on it, he gave a doleful look. Perhaps Grandmother is right this time, he said. After all, we don't want the snake to get a hold of Toto. It's sure to be very hungry. Grandfather hurried off to the bazaar while Grandmother paced up and down the veranda. When he returned looking shamefaced, we knew he hadn't been able to find the snake charmer. Well, then kindly take it away yourself, said Grandmother. Leave it in the jungle across the riverbed. All right, said Grandfather. He marched into the bathroom, followed in single file by me, Grandmother, the cook, and the gardener. Grandfather opened the door and stepped into the room. I peeped around his legs while the others stayed well behind. We couldn't see the python anywhere. He's gone, announced Grandfather. He couldn't have gone far, said Grandmother. Look under the tub. We looked under the tub, but the python wasn't there. We left the window open, Grandfather said, blushing at his own forgetfulness. He must have gotten out that way. A careful search was made, out, made of the house, the kitchen, the garden, the stable, and the poultry shed, but the python could not be found anywhere. He must have gone over the garden wall, said Grandfather. He'll be well away by now. I certainly hope so, said Grandmother. Aunt Mabel arrived next day, the next day for a three-week visit. For a couple of days, Grandfather and I were a little worried that the python would make a sudden reappearance. But on the third day, when he didn't show up, we felt sure he had gone for good. And then, toward evening, we were startled by a scream from the garden. Seconds later, Aunt Mabel came flying up the veranda steps. In the guava tree, she gasped. I was reaching for a guava when I saw it staring at me, the look in its eyes, as though it would eat me alive. Calm down, dear, urged Grandmother, sprinkling eau de cologne over my aunt. Tell us, what did you see? A snake, sobbed Aunt Mabel, a great boa constrictor. It must have been 20 feet long in the guava tree. Its eyes were terrible, and it looked at me in such an odd way. My grandparents exchanged knowing looks, and Grandfather hurried out into the garden. But when he got to the guapa tree, the python was gone. Aunt Mabel must have frightened it away, I said. Hush, said Grandfather. You mustn't speak of your aunt in that way. But his eyes were alive with laughter. 
After this incident, the python began to make frequent brief appearances, usually in the most unexpected places. One morning, I found him curled up on the dressing table, gazing at his reflection in the mirror. I went for grandfather, but by the time we returned, the python had moved on. He was seen in the garden and ascending the iron ladder up to the roof. Then we found him on the dressing table a second time, admiring himself in the mirror. All the attention he's getting has probably made him conceited, said grandfather. All right, pause right here and write your genre-based thinking job. Remember, you're going to get a grade on that and your annotations. When you're ready to hear the writing prompt, you can click play. All right, writing prompts. By the end of the passage, the python has become a frequent, unexpected visitor. Write a continuation of the passage that describes what happens next and how the characters resolve the problem. Be sure to use what you have learned about the setting, characters, and plot of the passage. Manage your time carefully so that you can, one, plan your response and do some pre-writing in the space provided. Two, write your response on the lined pages of your answer document. Your written response should be in the form of a multi-paragraph narrative story. Write your response to the writing prompt in the space provided in your answer document. So in this spot, this is just for you to do some planning, kind of like you wrote um, an outline for your essay this year. And then on the line pages is where you'll write your essay. I'm gonna read the prompt one more time. Listen very carefully. By the end of the passage, the python has become a frequent, unexpected visitor. Write a continuation of the passage that describes what happens next and how the characters resolve the problem. Be sure to use what you have learned about the setting, characters, and plot of the passage. You have the rest of class to write your narrative story. You guys got this.